And hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. So today I think I want to deal with this. These drives being completely full almost. I have a few 4Ks left. But I do want to deal with it regardless. I am inputting a lot of crap and I want to input even more crap. Because if we come down to our mob farm here, yeah, we're completely full. Completely full of junk. The barrels aren't full, but these chests are full. So that means I have to deal with these uh, spoils bags somehow. And I think that's what we'll be doing today, is trying to deal with these spoils bags. Because they are just completely full. I think I have around 10 chests here. Yeah, 10 exactly. I think I have 2 or 3 obsidian and the rest iron full of spoils bags. So we're going to deal with that, and I think I'm going to set up another item filter system, kind of like what I did with the uh, with the sifter setup. I'm going to do some kind of a some kind of a setup there uh, to see what kind of crap we get out of the bags, because I honestly have no idea what kind of stuff is in those bags. You you can get all sorts of stuff. So today I'm going to be dealing with storage a little bit. And I think how I want to do that is I want to build another another assembler setup to compress all of our compressibles. Like our iron bars, our coal, our... Uh, what else do we have that's compressible? Redstone, glowstone, all of that stuff that we can compress and save space on. That's what I want to deal with today. So I think I already set up this to make assemblers. Yes, I did. I'm also going to need to set it up to make basic... Uh, exports. So let's see. Basic export. Maybe I want... Because I know there's precision. I'm going to set it up for basic for now. And this should all be... Yeah, we already have all this done. Basic export bus. Precision is just a processor, so... Yeah. So what I'm going to do is kind of dig out what is all compressible here and we're gonna start compressing it that's about it so let me go through and just dig up whatever I see that's compressible I'll see you shortly alright so I'm back and I do have all my compressibles but I'm kinda thinking that this might not work as well as I'm hoping it will uh, let's see let's get that export did I make it Craft me one of them, and let's get a processor, another one. Because I'm thinking this this might not work like logistics pipes will work, where it'll only send the precise amount, and it won't send when it doesn't have enough. So maybe a precision import will be good, maybe it'll only send the exact number we need. I'm not sure. We're going to have to kind of find out if this will work or not. Like, I'm not worried about it for coal and quartz and certus. If it backs up in the cyclic assembler, like if I have um, if I have three quartz sitting in assembler and waiting for a fourth, that doesn't bug me. But if I have eight diamonds sitting in assembler waiting for a ninth, that kind of bugs me. It's not the end of the world, but it's, it's not ideal, that's for sure. Uh, let's get one more export just so I can kind of compare these. crafting away. Should be done soon. There we go. Alright, so this guy, can I set a number on this? Uh, pass me some more nether quartz. Will it export an exact number? It does not look like it. Just looks like it's a simple interface that will just keep exporting that item over and over again. Move single slash craft, always craft, and move single move stacks. Ah, I don't know if this will work so good for stuff like diamonds. Because I'm going to have stuff backed up in the assembler. Oh, I got to think about how I want to do this, if it's even possible with a... Well, it's possible, it's definitely possible, but I want it to be efficient and not wasteful. 
not have stuff just repeatedly going over there if there's not enough. Hmm. I do have to think about this. Okay, so this is a little bit trickier than I thought it would be. To do this without having just a lot of items sitting in the assemblers doing nothing. And I think the way I'm going to have to do it is with an emitter. Um, yeah, I think with an emitter we'll do the job. So let's clear this out and teach it how to make an emitter. Level emitter. Alright, so, let's see. Uh, let me sort this out. I'm gonna need... I'm gonna need nine for the bars. Uh, fifteen, sixteen. So let me get... Well, let's make a con proof of concept first. Let's just get one emitter. We have our precision export. The basic export won't work. So speaking of that, uh, let's get some more blanks. Read ten more blanks. Let's teach us how to make a precision export. Encode. So that'll make me precision exports. Um, I'll throw this one back in because I'm pretty sure I'm just going to need precisions here. It's not making my emitter. Oh, redstone torch. Well, that's simple enough to teach it. Pass me a stick. Redstone torch. And just make sure it uses the right sticks. And we'll throw that in our... We had a miscellaneous pile here somewhere. Now we'll throw it in the vanilla pile. Vanilla recipe. Are you good now? Yeah, it's good. Alright, so emitter. Now we have our emitter and our precision. So that should be enough for proof of concept. Emmy cables. Uh, assembler. Make me one of them. We're gonna need some schematics. I should teach the system how to make these too. Paper and lapis and code. Don't ask me why I'm trying to keep my recipes um, sorted. I really don't know why, but I am. We should also teach it that sugarcane equals paper. Encode. It's probably something I should do too, is set up a basic sugarcane farm. Alright, so that should be enough for a schematic. Our assembler should be done. Do I have enough for proof of concept yet? I think I do. Uh, let me just get a chest and put my stackables in a chest so I don't forget which ones are which. I'll just throw this right here for now. Should be good. Alright, so we have our cables, our precision, and our assembler with our emitter. I think that should be good. In theory, I think we have a decent setup here for compressing our stuff. And where I'm going to build this, I think I'm just going to build this compression setup right under my main stuff. Um, maybe I'll put it all here. Yeah, I'm fine with it over here. Alright, so this will be our row of assemblers, I suppose, around here somewhere. Make sure we shift-click this. <clears throat> we can import from the top, and I'll put from the back. That should be fine. Our precision export will go in like so. And we are going to need this emitter. I think on top of it we'll still emit the signal. I think that'll still admit a signal enough for this. So we're going to have this on active with signal, and this will emit a signal when our levels are above or equal to. So let me go grab some stuff. 
I will just use quartz for now. Let's start compressing nether quartz. Actually, it's only four quartz. So we throw our schematic in, we're going to teach this assembler how to compress quartz. Perfect. So this will now compress quartz. And this should be all set up. We're going to need power around to here. Uh, I need to do that now actually. And the hardened. It should be okay. Probably going to have to upgrade that line sooner or later. If I plan on having 17 assemblers down there, probably going to need to upgrade from Hardened, but for now it'll do. Just for proof of concept and all that jazz. Um, suppose I'll run this line off of here somewhat. That'll do for now. Not the prettiest wiring job, but... Okay, so you're now powering up. You should be good once we get this guy. We'll export quartz, active with signal, move single items craft. I think I want it, because I mean, if I move it to a move a stack, it's not going to listen to the emitter the way I want it to. Because if it moves a stack of items, it's it's going to go over the uh, emitter signals, so we're going to have to stick with signals or singles here. All right, so let's connect this guy up to our ME line there. So we'll run him over and up, the same way our conduit comes. And right there. Alright, so let's see if this works. It's emitting a signal. Oh. Let's just disable that active with signal. It's emitting too much of a signal. I forgot to set this guy up. How you set this up is uh, you put the item in, ME level emitter, I want it 4 or above, right? Emit when levels are above or equal to the limit. So I think I'd want it on 4 just to be precise. So for nether quartz, it'll emit redstone, which it is. If we invert it, you'll see it isn't. This is just an invert switch, basically. So now it's inverted. How come it's still emitting a signal when it has nothing to tell it to em emit? That kind of seems like a bug. Maybe it's just like that, it'll emit always. Okay, so it's emitting when you have more than four quartz. Uh, this guy's just going to keep producing blocks of quartz for us. I think we're good to set this up now. Good. Active with signal, move signal, and craft quartz. You should be working now. That's not. Why? Import. Just disable the export. Something is bugged up here. Five? It was working, then I broke it. Let me just break these and replace them. Maybe something bugged. Let's try this one more time. Emitter, face out that way. You're going to emit when you have more than four quartz, right? And precision export. We'll start exporting with a redstone signal, quartz. Import on the top. What did I break? Is this not receiving a signal for some reason? It should be.
Something is bugged here because this should be set up perfectly fine. They're set up to move a stack. Alright, I'm back and now it's getting a signal with this setup. I guess it was just me not putting the redstone signal in there properly, but now it's working. It's doing its job. Uh, same exact setup, active with signal. Move single craft, doesn't matter. Move single items is what you want. Of quartz, it should be sending quartz into there. Level emitter, same exact setup. Emits levels when above or equal to the limit for nether quartz. And it's working now. I guess I just didn't have the emitter located right. But now it's working, so... Whatever. <laughs> it's working. We're just gonna duplicate that same kind of derpy look. Okay, so, now we have to power these, and I think I'll just run a power line to the top of them all, and the output will be on the bottom. So let's make sure we have this set up right. Import on the back, I'll put on the bottom, that'll come down this way. Mm-hmm, good. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this setup for all my stackables, and this should do a great job. Like, it'll stop emitting when the levels drop below 4 quarts, so as soon as it hits 3, it won't send them to the assembler. Hopefully. Time to craft. Alright, well I'm waiting for these export buses to craft up. <coughs> I've already laid down my assemblers. Um, I'm gonna lay down item ducts for the uh, export because it's gonna be cheaper and easier to go about it this way actually. These are automatically outputting from the bottom as is so what I'm gonna do is just send them all to a chest and then have a basic import on the chest just like we've done a hundred times before. So chest will go, let's say, here. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Chest will go there, basic import will hit the top, and we'll run an ME line to that. So that'll import all the compressed items back into the network. We just gotta set these to outputs. This one should already have a decent amount of quartz built up. Ah, uh, where's my wrench? Right there. And it should be pulling it out and assembling. Just like we wanted it to. Awesome. So that's saving us a lot of space. A lot of space. Oh, not red. That should all be piling up in this chest in block form. Great. Okay, so let's see how our exports are doing. Alright, so this should be good now. Uh, I mean, cable 13. Yeah, that's enough. We'll just connect straight to this one back here. That'll do. That should be pulling the quartz out. I could put a precision import here and it'll pull a stack at a time, but once I get the backlog done, I don't think it's going to have any problems keeping up once the backlog is done. This guy's still crafting up quartz. I have so much quartz, like 6,000 or something it's going through right now. Alright, so I'm going to set up the rest of these exports. I'll be back once I have my um, compressibles compressing. Alright, so we've set up the last export bus. Now everything should be compressing. Arriving in the chest and getting pulled up. Awesome. I'm quite pleased with that. We already have some stuff done, like our bars are done. So it's compressed down all our iron. We still do have a little bit floating, like this isn't perfect. But I think once once it runs for a while and uh, once it like gets rid of the backlog, it'll be close enough. I mean, it's never going to be perfect, but without logistics pipes, I don't know how you can make it compress perfectly without going over its quota. This is about as close as I could figure out how to do it without having a massive backlog inside the assemblers. 
so that's all compressing. Uh, one thing I'm gonna have to do is teach this how to uncompress blocks uh, with these, so I'll leave this as a note to myself in between episodes to teach the system how to uncompress these on demand. So we'll just leave that chest there. And I think we're good now with that. All done. Uh, there is one thing though, like I showed you earlier, I do want to take care of this video too. And that's I want to set up a buffer system um, to see what's in these spoils bags. So for that I'm going to need just some chests, some basic chests, uh, some item ducts, I'm just going to stay with opaque. Servos, I'm not sure how many I'm going to need. Uh, activator, I'm going to need one activator. I think that should be about good. Activator is going to open the bags into a chest. Chests are then going to shoot them into another chest to see what's in the spoils bags. And after we get that set up, just like our sieve, where we set up that temporary buffer just to see what is in all of these spoils bags. Once we figure out what the hell we're receiving, then we can start sending them into the system and dumpstering the rest of them. Yeah. We haven't looked at this mob farm in a while. So, how we're going to do this, I suppose, is we'll just run a line off of this trash can. Maybe not. Maybe I'll run it off the bottom here. Off the trash can, to a simple activator with a servo. That will be whitelisted for spoils bags. Whitelist spoils bag. And that will right click into a chest. Let's just see. Perfect, it's right clicking into chests. Uh, I need one of each tier, I think. Here's a tier 3. Do they have different numbers? 6297, 6297. Doesn't appear so. So maybe they'll all appear. Okay, so that's where my spoils bags are gonna go from now on. They're gonna right click into the chest. Uh, from there, we're going to export them into some dummy chests, just to see what the hell we've accumulated in these spoils bags. That's going to be in the way. Let me move these over a little bit. Where can I put these that won't interfere with another item duct line? I can just put them in the floor. Yeah, that works. Three, four. And we'll pump them out into the chests. And then we can sort through it, see what kind of crap we're getting out of the spoils bags. And just like everything else, we will garbage can them. Okay, you were, what's this? Staff of traveling. Hmm. You can start pumping out. Find your home. Okay, so we're good here. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do though is pump these spoils bags out of there into the activator. So we're gonna do it just like we did in every other place. We're just gonna shoot it right back into the pipe and they should find a home. In theory. Oh, my activator's not set up. Input. Now? Now they're finding home. So we should get all sorts of random crap in here. Look at all that junk. I can definitely see some stuff we're gonna want a dumpster. Oh, there's a saddle. We can take that to our horse. So I wonder what happens when the chest fills up. What the hell's that? So my chest is full. Is it still right clicking the items? I think it's just going to input the ones it has room for and then it's going to wait to for a room. So I'm fine with that. That's working. Um, what I'm going to do is just slowly export these bags a couple chests at a time because I still need 
for this loot to find a home. Oh, it should be finding room for it. Yeah, it's finding room now. Great. So I think next video we're going to start sorting out all this crap we're getting. And I think after we're done sorting out this crap from the spoils bags, I kind of want to start learning Darkcraft a bit. So I think I'm going to learn a little bit about Darkcraft in between videos and we'll just hop right into it because I know zero about Darkcraft. Absolutely zero. And I know you can fly with it. Like, I guess I should have said spoiler warning, but I know you can fly with it. So we're going to start figuring out Darkcraft next video. We're going to play with it a bit after we set up that, um, that mess of crap we're going to get out of the spoils bags. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we were now auto compressing all of our stuff and look at that. We were half red. I think we were three quarters red on our drives and it's not even done yet. Like it's still processing quartz. Still processing quartz. I think all of our uh, bars search for ore. Now all of our bars have pretty well been compressed down at this point. Yeah. It has. It's working great. We still have some extras left over so the, we can put them in and request more, you know? Good craft from our cubes. Let's get me... Uh, let's just request like a few stacks of tin and it's doing it perfectly fine. And it's going to pull them back into the assemblers down below and re compress them as needed. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, for not having logistics pipes to fine-tune the system, all I have is these messy exports and a redstone emitter. If you know of a better way, please let me know, because this is this is kind of messy, and it's the only way I could think of to do it. It's the only way I could think of to do it, so if you know of a better way, please leave a comment to let me know and I'll go about that way because we don't have factorization to automatically do it and I don't have logistics pipes to send the correct number all I have is these emitters which is close it's doing an okay job not a great job but an okay job but I guess I should wrap it up I've been talking for a while but nothing until next time hope you enjoyed the video storage is taken care of maybe there's one more thing I'm gonna look into before I end the video bigger drives. Yeah. What do we have this thing? It doesn't know anything about drives. So let's teach our system really quick before we end the video. How to craft us a big storage drive. So I want to aim at some 64Ks. What do I need for 64K? It's going to need to know how to make a storage cluster, which we're going to need a storage block, storage segment, storage cell is the first one. Don't I have it already knowing how to make a storage cell? Apparently not. So let me do this really quick. Storage cell. Uh, and then we're at 64k, so we got the storage cell. And we need to know how to make the storage segment. We need to know how to make the storage block. We already know how to make a processor. And then we know how to make a storage cluster. Let's make storage block, cell segment, cluster. And is that enough for 64? I think it is. I think this should be all the steps we need for 64, right? Let's just go over one more time. So, we have this step, we have the cluster step, we have the block step, we have the segment step, and we have the cell step. Let's get these in right order, because that's going to bug me. <laughs> 64k? Request? It's missing glowstone. Let's do this really quick. Oh no, I can't uncompress glowstone. That's a derp. I think this is something we're going to have to address next video. How to uncompress glowstone. 
But we have our 64k on the way. I'm gonna manually uncompress glowstone, but I gotta think of a way to do it. So this is the real wrapping up. Sorry guys, this is the real wrapping up. I'm gonna get these 64k's on the way. I need to get it some glowstone. Um, but I think we could figure out a way to uncompress glowstone. Yeah, I think we can. If not, we could just skip that step. But yeah, I gotta wrap up. We'll see you all next time.